Um, so, is there anybody that wasn't here yesterday? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so in Bay, just simply, what we're talking about here is that this, the suggestion here is that this is everything. This is empty fullness. There is only empty fullness, which is a mystery. How can emptiness be full? Well, that's what there is. That's what we're talking about. We're sharing in a mystery. It's unknowable. But in that empty fullness, which is boundless and free, and has no purpose or meaning of any kind, within that boundlessness, there appears to suddenly arise a sort of limitation, a feeling of contraction, that free energy, which is suddenly also, because it's free, it can also be limited. So that limited energy arises in the human form, in the human, it's uniquely a human thing that appears to happen. It's not real, but it seems to happen. And when it seems to happen in the tiny child, after a, maybe a year of being born, let's say, it doesn't matter. What arises is a sense of identity. Suddenly there's a feeling, I am. I am real. I'm a real person. I am real. And I live in this world which is also real. And as a child grows up, so it, it meets other peop real people. <laughs> You're a real person, yes, so are you. So then it, then, it, then it thinks, it feels that that's normal. For a little while, as a tiny child, there's still a sense of something else. But that gets overlaid, overlaid by, by adult, you know, it grows into an adult and it meets lots of other grown-up people and all of them think that to be in that world with that experience is normal. So they grow up uh, in the, uh, what I call the hypnotic I am dream. I am a person. This is the world which happens to me. I'm in here and things that happen out there and even in here are happening to me, the individual. And that's my experience. So the individual lives in, in, in experience. It is experience. But not only that, the individual is also dualism. It doesn't enter some grey cloud which is dualistic. <laughs> it is dualism. And, and so it sees everything as two, as split. So it sees good and bad and better and worse and inner and outer. And it sees me and the world. So it lives in separate. It is separation. And that feeling is dissatisfying. So it, people try to make the best of that feeling of being separate. They don't necessarily recognize it. If you went into the street and said, do you feel separate? People would say, no, I don't know. <laughs> but that's actually what is experienced. In experience, which is, the, which is what happens to the, in, the individual. The individual is, is an experiencer, then there's a feeling of being separate. But for some people, that feeling is not fulfilling and they look at it in a deeper way to try and find fulfilment. But of course they've grown up believing that they have to do it. You have to be a good child, you have to be a good student at school, you have to be a good husband or work hard. And you have to learn how to do that. So if you want to find fulfilment, you have to learn how to become fulfilled. <laughs> But the problem for the individual is that the individual wants to experience fulfilment because it experiences everything else. Everything else that happens is experienced by it in, in that way as something that's happening to it. So it learns, it tries to learn how it can experience fulfilment. And that, that task is absolutely divinely, wonderfully futile.
Because what it's looking for is, in, in that dualistic sphere, is an escape from that dualism. It's trying to escape from itself, it's trying to escape from its own essence, which is dualistic. And it can't do it because it's trying to use dualistic tools or ways or paths to find that which is beyond dualism. So that's what we're, we're talking about here. We're just sharing in the way that arises and we're also sharing the way the adult believes it is, is, it is and how it believes the world is. And it's possible that that very built-in idea of what reality is like can unravel and undo. Nobody can undo it. Nobody. There is nobody, <laughs> so there isn't anybody to undo it. That's what will also arise, the mystery that there is nobody, there is no reality, there is no world, there is no such thing as seeking or liberation. That will arise. All of those things are in the dream. So seeking is like, we have an English saying, looking for a needle in a haystack. Do you, do you know that? Okay, so seeking is like looking for a needle in a haystack. So what might arise here is the realization or the recognition that there is no needle and there is no haystack. That's it. It does? Yeah, man. Yeah? Oh. Uh, oh, I don't normally... You Not very loud, but it's on. Uh, it's... Um, I've, I've heard your uh, introduction over and over. Yeah, again. I know. And it's amazing how sometimes um, an, a different expression can mm. uh, uh, throw a new light on yeah, things. That, yeah. And the, um, what struck me was that you said that we, um, we experience everything else yeah. and we uh, do want to experience wholeness as well. Yeah. And it's, it struck me like that we, ha we have to sort of de-experience. So if you... Um, you are experienced. The me is experienced. Yes. Mm. And it's so if you... If you are at home alone and you are without any um, stimuli, thing, a stim a st a stimuli you, there comes this, this, this quietness over you and that's it, isn't it? Well, I don't think it is because you're talking about an experience. But well, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm not sure, but what, well, the way you describe it, there comes nothing. a but who knows yeah. that there's a silence. 
Yeah, but you don't think about that really because no. there is the silence, and, uh, yeah, and I, I, it, it's not that I've become one or that, uh, no, no. anything at all. But it's uh, but it's it's the lack of stimuli really. So you have to sort of. Well, it's, yeah, but what we're talking about here is the end or the death of the experience. Yes. Yeah. The experience that lives thing. in That's a dream, a thing, yeah. and when there's no experiencer, then yeah. uh, stimuli or no stimuli is completely irrelevant now, because yeah. there's, but the point is there is no one. That can uh, so and there's no one yeah. in, and then the, all that's left is everything, yes. and in everything there can be stimuli. Yes. But it doesn't matter because there's nobody experiencing it. Yes. It's the end of experience. Yes. But it's it's it can just fall away in Absolutely. without realizing oh, it. Oh, there, um, there's no conditions for it to yeah. fall away. It doesn't need to be here or anywhere. No. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and actually, of course, once it's fallen away, there's a recognition that it was never there to fall away. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know, yeah. But we have to talk in that sort of way, as so, though, know, or we don't have to, but that's what seems to happen. In a way, it's like parables. It's like what we're sharing is a it's something in an apparent story uh, which is actually pointed to the bit that there is no story and there is no one and there's <laughs> all there is is what is which can't be known this is what is um. I want to ask about um, choice. Is choice always for the... Um, in the dream, yeah. Yeah, it's choice... Personal choice is in the dream, yeah. And this is the only type of choice there is? Well, the brain apparently makes choices, but it doesn't need me or the self for that to happen. <laughs> and in the end, it's only another appearance of a, of a choice. There is, you know, this is all... Um, the me, the self, absolutely believes it is real and it believes its story is real. I have a story, I was born, will live and will die and that story has meaning and purpose. What we're doing is uncovering that as an illusion and uh, part of, the, of, the, of that illusion is that there could be anything that would need to make a choice. But in what appears to be happening, there seems to be a choice made which is the brain making choice. All the time there's a sense of a self or me here, it will lay claim to that. You know, I'm, having, I'm choosing to have tea, it's my choice, because I'm a very important, I'm, I'm me and I'm real. So I'm choosing to have tea, whereas actually the brain has already chosen tea as against coffee. Because in the experience, this choice, often certain choices carry strong, uh, emotional charges with it. Yeah. That, that's an evidence that... Yeah. It's, it's, it's emotionally tied to the idea that I am a person with choice and my choices could be right or wrong. Oh, exactly, so it's very strongly connected to this idea that there could be a wrong one and, Absolutely, the, and the good one and uh, there is some mechanism that tries to verify. Yeah, which yeah. Is because the me lives in polarity. The me is polar polarity. The me is dualism too. So it lives in, in two worlds, one's right and the other's wrong, or in simple terms. So it's right to drink tea rather than coffee. Your mum told you that. <laughs> or your healer, your healer has told you. <laughs> in in the nat what I would call the natural reality, in in the uh, empty fullness, there is no right or wrong, obviously, because there aren't two. In the natural reality, there is simply oneness. So the whole idea of right and wrong is just only in the, in the story. Because I found that somehow because there is the sense of insecurity. Insecurity. Due to the choice. Yeah. So the, 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 the brain or the mind tries to use all this um, spirituality stuff yeah, to, yeah. to justify saying oh there is no there is no chooser or everything is predestined so somehow everything is okay and yeah. uh, to, to justify this sense of insecurity that they might have been a wrong choice yeah absolutely but this all happens on a very psychological level it's still an experience yeah sure. all of that spiritual teaching is still part of the experience and the story the, the, the spiritual teaching any sort of teaching can only be uh, arise in a story 
because it's about um, an endeavour to change or be better or whatever. Yeah, so, so here it seems it doesn't need to be spiritual teaching. I can look at certain philosophical movements too as well, yeah. try to justify it. Oh no, there's all sorts. Yeah. Yeah. Me will create all sorts of scenarios or uh, where, where it, which it can attach itself to and belong to, um, and they are all paths or processes which will make its life better in one way or another, be it political, financial, or, spirit, or so-called spiritual. But they're all, they're all trying to recompense, is that right, that word? They're trying to counter the feeling of being separate. Mm -hmm. And so everything that you see your friends or people doing is all to try and comfort themselves for actually losing home. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do that, they don't know how to find home, so they try to make their experience of themselves better, a better one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when that is not seen, the attention seems to be that there is a problem with this choice, yeah, and that the choice yeah. is the source of the problem, and that needs to be yeah. solved. But that's because it's this or that. Yeah. But that's just uh, an illusory cause, yeah, because it's, no, it seems certain. that that is. Oh, the it's cause. all part of the illusory dream, yeah. How, how do you think, Tony, about the Western philosophy? Western? Western philosophy. Oh, is there one? What? No. I, think, <laughs> I thought there's about 500. Yes, what do you think about that? That's also a story then? Or oh, of course it is, yeah. It is a story. It's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, on what I know of it, it's all based on the idea that there is an individual who can make a choice to become enlightened, in very simple terms. There's the stories of Nietzsche, Schopenhauer, Kant, the Stoics. Nietzsche was sort of uh, um, well, uh, Mom were at one time pointed towards something, but then he changed uh, his whole philosophy later on into the idea of Superman. Yes, but so for me, yeah. you know, that, he didn't, that, he didn't, he didn't meant that, of course. No, I know, but yeah. That's, uh, yeah. so that, the, yeah, all of those sort of things, as far as I can, as far as I know, of yeah. course, uh, which is quite limited, yeah. um, are all part of the dream. Yes, I can, I can be a Superman or whatever. Yeah. There is an eye, yes. Yeah. And the second question I have for you, like we can ask anything here? Eh? Oh, almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know if there is a thinking like that organism uh, Tony Parsons is thinking. Can you, how would I say it, still have normal social talks, small yeah. talks with people? <laughs> Or are you always, when you are having social small talks, are you always thinking in your afterhead, oh, it's, it's not real? Oh, or sweetheart, you are so sweet. <laughs> there isn't anything in here that's thinking yeah, that's anything. Right. Yeah. There just is life. Yeah. But I have to say, when the milkman comes, you know the milkman? Yeah, yeah. the milkman. When he comes to the, to the door, I always say to him, you do know that, there, that there's only empty fullness, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and that you're not really a milkman, you know, I know. No, of course, this talks to all, so, you know, whatever's happening, there's a response. But it's not a personal response anymore. There's no person in there responding to another person because there is no relationship. This is the end of relationship. There isn't anything to relate to. There's no one to relate to. There's no one. So when the milkman <laughs> comes, there isn't a milkman, a person who is a milkman. It's just something that's happening. And it's the same with everything else. There's no relationship with the trees or the sky because there is no longer anyone or anything to relate to another something. It's the end of relating. But if social talk about politics, Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. <laughs> or anything like that arise, there can be a response. Like, hooray! Oh no. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Um, so there, is, there are different responses to whatever circumstances arise. But the only thing I would say that's different is that because there's no longer anyone with an agenda to please or displease, <coughs> You know, as they would be in a relationship. There's no longer any games going on because there's no self-consciousness. Self-consciousness dies with the experience of being a someone. There's no longer any importance in, 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 in that relationship, in, a, in what was a relationship. So there's no agenda to please or displease. So some people find that a bit disturbing because you're not in the normal circuit when you're an individual, you grow up and learn how to play the game and stroke the ego or whatever and that's what people are used to when they meet somebody that isn't there anymore that can be disturbing because there's not anything trying to get anywhere yeah <laughs> Hi Tony, um, I saw 25 years ago that there is no one, but uh, the, the seeker came back and it really enjoyed going to saints and chanting mantras and meditating. Yeah, yeah, I did all that. And, yeah. and I just wonder what you recommend because... Oh no, no, because no, I, I can't recommend anything because so there's no one there to re recommend anything to and there, there is nowhere to go. The, what this message is saying is that, there, that, that, is that this is complete. Within this, this completeness, there arises a sense in the individual that this isn't complete. But, but as far as this is concerned, there wouldn't be any idea that there's something over there that could choose to go through a process or on a path to find that completeness. Because directly you choose to try and find the completeness, you're, that's a confirmation that this isn't complete. It's like the individual lives in dualism and can't feel ever satisfied by that, so he constantly looks for non-dual, what it calls non-dualism. There is no such thing, by the way, but it looks for that. It thinks non, the non-dual is a something which will bring it freedom. So it goes on searching for that with all sorts of, with mantras, meditation, self-inquiry, everything to try and find that, that completion. It never will because it only lives and exists and experiences non-dualism. But I can't stop doing it. No, you, oh, no, I'm not suggesting for a moment. This is not a suggestion that you stop seeking because if it was, we'd be back in a dualistic teaching. I would be a teacher suggesting to you that you stop seeking and then you'll find what you're looking for. Forget it. That's ridiculous. It's another idea that something there can do something to find what it longs for. You will never find what, you're, what you long for because what you long for, what the me longs for, it turns into an object. I, I want to find fulfillment or love or, or enlightenment or something. So then that what it wants to attain becomes a something and there aren't any somethings. All there is is what is. What you're looking for, what you are looking for, is already all there is. Wow! It's already all there is. So how can you look for it? Where, where are you going to start looking for that? Which is already everything. Yeah, but that, that gives a feeling of peace when you do this meditation and... Well, well, meditation I found and all those things made me peaceful for a, very little, for a while, about five minutes usually. Um, it's a very nice feeling of doing all those things. Um, but that's just like going to the cinema or going, going to watch a film. You feel good for a little while. It's got nothing to do with what we're talking about here. This, what we're talking about here has nothing to do with you feeling good. It has nothing to do with you. 
you won't get this, you can't get this if you are that which is searching for this. And there's nothing to search for because it already is. Yeah? So if you search for it, you're, you're turning it into a something you can find or become worthy of. Yeah, the, the weird thing is that I have seen that there is no one. Sorry? I, I have seen that there is no one. I saw it, or it was seen. Oh. But then the seeker came back anyway. Right, oh, okay. Well, they may have seen it, except that it can't be seen. But still, it can't be seen or known. So, uh, <clears throat> along that line, I'm still in the witnessing self mode. Yeah, witnessing is just <clears throat> awareness, really. Yeah. Yeah. So, because I love sitting in the afternoon, it appears. So that up I, I sit in the afternoon. You know, I'm just suddenly I feel like I have to sit, and then I observe my thoughts, my mind, my emotions, and I'm still aware there's someone observing. Well, you are like most people, but me can only observe or watch or be aware of what's happening. That's the normal state of, of, of dualism. There is something that watches the dualism going on. Right, so I'm, I'm kind of like stuck in that. Well, of course. <clears throat> and I think I'm meditating or I'm getting someplace or, oh yeah, I'm observing my anger arising yeah. and... Well, it's the same thing as someone yes. who thinks they can get to somewhere or something called um, enlightenment or whatever you like to call it. That's the whole dilemma. I am a someone, I am, and there is something called enlightenment that I can attain or reach or become worthy of if I do this or that or what my teacher tells me to do. It's just needle and haystack, needle and haystack. Or constantly, it's constantly only that because constantly the me can only seek that which already is. So I keep showing up here, hoping you will free me. No. <laughs> so there isn't a me to free you, and there's no one to free. All there is, already, is freedom. So where would you go to find it, if it already is? Where? This is freedom. This is this is all there is. Already, there's only freedom. So then, why would you say it can unravel? No, no, it can't unravel. But the 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 idea of being a real person in a real world can unravel, but that's not enlightenment. That's not enlightenment, that's only an unravelling of an original idea that you've adopted. Oh, that's not enlightenment. No. Answer no to my next question. Yeah, but no. no, yes. <laughs> I thought, see, uh, you are predictable, of course. Um, but um, can you can you tell something more about there is everything and that's emptiness and fullness? Well, uh, there isn't a lot to say about that because it's unknowable, so it's not possible to describe it. The only, the only uh, thing that arises is that whatever you're looking at at the moment is both real and unreal, or it is and it isn't, and that can't be comprehended. The, the, because the me, the individual, lives in, in a, what it experiences as a real world, it can't comprehend that the wall is real and unreal. <coughs> 
um, because uh, it can, can, can it can see the wall the wall as a real wall, or it experiences the wall as a will. But the wall is emptiness walling. Yeah. That's as near as you can get to it, but it doesn't. It's just another explanation. One day, when that collapses, that could ring me up, and this happens a lot. Wow! I can see now why you could never describe this, because I can't describe it to anyone here either. It can't be described. And suddenly, what was seen as a real world only becomes real and unreal. And <laughs> but, but it's incomprehensible. It's totally. Of Even for There isn't anything that can comprehend it, because it's beyond experience. It's beyond knowing. It can't be known. And, and how can you know that you can say that it's unknowable? No, you don't know. There isn't anybody that knows. There is only that. There is only this. And OK, I'm describing somebody who says, wow, you know. Yeah. Initially, when, that, when there is no one, there, there is a sort of wow. Claire always says, it's a big wow which then becomes a gentle wow. <laughs> yeah, but, still yeah. no, there is no wow. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, you could say there's, there's, um, there's a sort of gentle wow. Yeah, gentle wow. <laughs> because in, in comparison to the world that Tony Parsons lived in, which was a real world, with all cause and effect, and real cause and effect, and, right and wrong, all those things, and separation, this is incomparable. I mean, Tony Parsons had an idea of what enlightenment could be like. He wanted to become enlightened because he wanted to be glorified and all-powerful, and especially he wanted young ladies to fall in love with him, but that, that's a side issue. But this, in comparison to what Tony Parsons thought an enlightenment was like, I mean, Wow. <laughs> but then there is somewhere a, dif um, a difference between um, philosophers and even neuroscientists. Oh, well, for neuroscientists that, are only yeah, in the story. Yeah. Still, yeah. Okay, but, but what they told, uh, tell, uh, for instance, about free will, neuroscientists always get back, there is um, the law of cause and effect, yeah. and because, of, because there is the law of cause and effect, we don't have free will, yeah. and because we can know all the causes and the effects, effects some choice can have uh, on us. So there is still cause and effect. But, but forget, if, you, if you speak of no free will and no choice, you speak of something else, I suppose. Oh yeah, but don't forget the new, neuroscientists. I mean, I, I can't, I, I, let's be simple about this and I'll just say it. Neuroscientists are people. Yes. They live in the, in the story. Yes. They are, if you read how, you know, Eagleman and all that lot, yeah. But it's quite obvious that they still see that the individual has no free will and choice, but in his story. Yes, yes. And, and therefore cause and effect might, uh, might bring all about right. a choice. That's all, they're, they're still in the dream. Yes, but... And I so are philosophers, as far as I'm concerned, because a philosopher is, is producing or suggesting a logical answer. Yes. But what I, may, what I see, uh, Tony, that is, you say that now about neuroscientists, but when it's, it matters, you say neuroscientists now see that there is no free it's will. It's interesting that neuroscientists... So sometimes you use it as, okay, it fits in my idea. Oh, no, I'm not, saying, no I'm not saying what neuroscientists have discovered is a proof that there is no one. Uh, yeah. I'm just suggesting that scientifically it's something that has been realised in a way, but only in the story. And it's the same with physicists. Yes. They talk about there being nothing. Yeah. They don't know what nothing is. But that discovery that there is a nothing and they're now trying to measure and find out what nothing is has only just recently arisen and it's only again a suggestion that the psyche of people is beginning to open up to the possibility of what we're talking about here. So you can not, say I'm not saying what they've discovered now proves that I'm right because I'm not right. You only see that the story of science 
confirms a it's little bit. It's converging. Yeah, it's, it stays a story, but it confirms yeah. a little bit what... It's converging towards what some, some mystics, only some, have been talking about for thousands yeah. of and years. And now I understand them better. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello. Um, yeah, what uh, what you say is, is uh, what, it is very simple, eh? Uh, oh, utterly. It's what is and what utterly is simple freedom? And you're already there. There is no way. You are already there. there no, no, I'm way. not there. No, no one's there. Ah, that's, that's what uh, I mean. That, there isn't anyone there. there that's is. the whole point. Yes, <laughs> that's that's what I mean. But how is it possible that people are looking for years and years and years? They have a lot of interest. That they, 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 they really uh, want to. No, want to be, and they still... They want to and they don't want to, yeah. And still, uh, they are not there. No, because they're looking for it. Yes. I've, I've already explained, the process yeah. of looking for this is a confirmation that this can't be this. It must be this when I've meditated or what, or I've done something in a, in a week's time. It's not this. So it's a, it's a complete denial of what already is. Yes. Uh, All seeking is a denial of what already yeah. is. It's really simple, I, I, yeah. I know. But I think a lot of people have problems also, I read. The illusion of, of me, um, the, the, like 30, 40 years you are in it, you developed a, a me, that uh, it's not really simple to deny that. Because well, even denying it is still me denying there's a me. It's got nothing to do with what we're talking about here. There's nobody here suggesting that me should deny if there is a me. That would be another teaching. Now you should go home and every night before you go to bed you have to deny that there's a... Oh, you know. <laughs> it's like, you know, you should meditate. <laughs> you should only eat rice and you should meditate and you should look at young women and all that crap. You know, that's uh, denying this and me is just crap. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah well, I know it's, it's, it's really simple. I, I understand it. <laughs> it's simple. But why, why are, yeah, maybe I, re I repeat the question, but why are we here then? Oh, you're not, well, you're here, you think, for all sorts of reasons, and the main thing is that actually, funny enough, you're not here. There's no one here. There's no one in this room. Yeah, we there are aren't one. any people in this room. There's bodies, and, the, and, and there's a body at the moment claiming to be here. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if you claim to be here, you are in the dream of me living in, in a place called here. There is no here, there is no moment, there is no now. All there is, is what is and is not, okay. which can't be known. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tony Spinoza. Spinoza. Um, if you say that uh, there is a body and a brain who thinks there are choices? Well, no, the, the, well, the, the, there's a body and within it there's a brain that, that apparently in the story has a function of choosing. Yes. And then added to that, the brain can construct an apparent individual, a feeling of individuality. The whole feeling of being an individual and experiencing me, the self and the I is a product of the brain. Of yes. course it's in the, uh, in the end that there isn't anything that is a product of anything, but in this story the sense of me is a product of the brain. So uh, life lives itself? Uh, well life lives, yeah. Life lives. <laughs> so what is freedom then? I, I uh, well, don't understand. I can't this. tell you until there's no one there. When there's no one there, then you can bring me up and tell me what freedom is, or you could try and describe it. It's indescribable. It's unknowable. 
the only thing about it is it's the end of that which experiences separation, which is uh, obviously an illusion. But freedom can't be described. Like unconditional love, wholeness, oneness, empty fullness, it's unknowable. Shit. <laughs> No, Spinoza was the only uh, uh, guy that sort of got near this, yes. as far as I know. Yeah, anyway. That's right. <laughs> but only near. Near. <laughs> also, the spirit of time. Yeah. Yeah. So Spinoza has also this period of time and he was also thinking we can know, he also says there is no free will and you can't make choices, yeah. but he was still there I think yeah, with an yeah. eye. He, he got near. Yeah, he didn't talk about this emptiness, no. everything, emptiness and fullness that is indescribable. He only says we can know all the reasons why we do what we do. Yeah. They are so complex, but he was still living in time and space, I think. By the, way, by the way, can you explain something more? That there is no time and space for you in your, in your thinking. That's what he said, is it? I don't... What, 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 oh, can, you, can, right, you, okay. can you, can you give a little bit more explanation yeah. about Oh, that? but this is about this. Spinoza only got near in his explanations to this. He was still a person who believed in yeah. his experience. Most of them were a long way away, but he got nearer. That's right. So it's your favorite si uh, oh, no, philosopher? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's only clarity? It's only a, a sort of clarity, but not, yeah. So I wanted to ask about the, um, again, this emotional stuff. Emotional. Yeah, so, so somehow it seems that, so there is this, this discussion happening here. Um, Apparently. Okay. <laughs> but um, still all this uh, emotional stuff seems to draw and strengthen this. So th this describe personal. what's happening there. Is, is this something to, what's going on there as far as emotions are concerned? And what, what's ha what seems to be happening? So there are certain memories, memory, and they seem to have some kind of um, emotional connection to it. And there is the mechanism that is afraid that this um, this this kind of emotion is going to happen again and again. And there is a oh, right. mechanism. What sort of emotion is it? What, what, what is the emotion? Uh, fear, uneasiness. Oh, right. um, okay. Is that there's, there's a resonance with something that was? that you can't quite recognize? Or what? what are, what's the memory? So the, the memory that came now was for uh, when I was here last time. And, uh, and after the session I went and there was a strong feeling of, of disappointment. Right, good. 
<laughs> so, so now there is a, a probably it's connected to the fact that there was already a sense of expectation. Yeah, yeah. That then there will this feeling of disappointment. Yeah. We show up again, there and would be. now now there is a. But it seems that these are not just thoughts. This is. Uh, this is not just a thought of disappointment. There is some kind of emotion of, um, connected to that. And there is some mechanism that tries to do something to prevent this sense or emotion of disappointment yeah. to show up again. Well, if there's expectation, there obviously would be disappointment because the, the me or the self has an expectation of what might arise here for the self. That's hence the disappointment. This is an empty shop. If, you, if there were two shops, you know, and one was selling lollipops, and the other was selling nothing, you'd obviously go to the one that's selling lollipops. Well, I would anyway. No, I wouldn't. So this, this is a place for the seeker, which can only bring disappointment. disappointment. Because the seeking need is not fed here at all. In fact, it's uh, illuminated and undone. But this, this emotions or the disappointment seems to strengthen that sense of um, of a person, or of the uh, strengthen strengthen the, the sense of a person. Yeah, yeah. There are, are there are two things that sort of can go on here. One is that the sense of me, the energy of me, can uh, can sort of undo or soften with the unravelling of the recognition of the uh, illusion of me. And the other thing is that the me can really strengthen here. Uh, so the me can hear this and feel uh, that there's a threat in what's being said here, so it, it reinforces itself. It's just what's happening. There's nothing right or wrong about any of it. very hard to tell what's going on here. Um, sometimes I have a, a kind of insight. I, I don't know really. A kind of? Insight into, no. for instance, how incredibly greedy uh, me is mm -hmm. in order to always sustain itself and yeah. its existence. Yeah. And, Sometimes it seems there's a, a little hole in that. Mm. <laughs> and that kind of is complete in itself. And, and then afterward, of course, Mies tries to understand and know yeah. more about it. And it's, it's like... A, yeah. I, I hear what you <laughs> what you say more or less in the same way uh, in, 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 is, is coming in differently like my god it's, it's really so I, I never realized it but there's resonance, isn't it? There's something resonant. Yeah. Yeah, something else is... Yeah. Uh, so, well, I guess that's it. No, absolutely. I mean, in a sense, what we're doing here is, or what can arise here, is a remembering of an innocence. Hence the sadness. Mm.
so Um, uh, this summer I read a, a comic book about the life of Douglas Harding. Oh yeah, Douglas Harding. The man with no head. I met him once, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> before, that, before I read that book I went to several teachers or people like you. I'm not a teacher. Yeah, sorry, but I have to call it something. <laughs> you are. Uh, <laughs> I'm not anything, but anyway, that's yeah. all. <laughs> okay. Well, when I read that book, I, I realized that you are what you see. You are what you see? Yeah. Right, okay. That everything is one. That, 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 that's what I realized. Everything is one, the oneness you talk about. Oh, everything is one. Yeah. That, that for me is a bit different to you are what you see. Yeah, I, I, want to, I, I want to describe, uh, I have to okay. say something to describe it, so. Okay. <laughs> and then I had that experience that uh, everything that those teachers told me felt on its place. Uh, everything he told you? The teachers about non-duality, what, what they told me, um, the knowledge I had until that moment felt on its place. Felt? Felt on its place. Oh. Is that right? right? You understand? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you call it, then if you call it, then okay. Um, what you talk about, what what we are talking about today, is what I experienced oh. after reading that book. Right. Okay. Well, let's accept it like that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, what I'm talking about can't be experience. Yeah, I think, yes, I think you I, probably mean I something understand. different. I have, to, I have to use a word to make it, yeah. so exp I use experience, but... Okay, <laughs> that's fine. And for a couple of weeks after that, I had this, you know, there were no thoughts, there was no I, there was only it, there was, there is. The now, the moment, the... Uh, all right, don't yeah. matter, but go on. <laughs> that, that was my experience, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it went away after a couple of weeks. Ah. Yeah, it would do if it was now, yeah. Sorry, you want to go on? Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't say it's away completely, it's it's felt it feels now like it's like a background vibe, you know? It's still there, but mm. it's not that strong anymore. Right. Um so that this it looks like I was sucked back into the story, into the into yeah. the me again. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. That's what apparently happens. Yeah, but this, it, it's not my question, how, how do I get back into no, it? No, 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 come on. <laughs> You're not seriously asking that question now, are no. you? After, no. no. <laughs> because what you say, what I said, is oh, it's, it's really simple. There's no way to get back to. No. <laughs> but then again, it's so simple. That's why. Why does anybody? It's too simple and obvious. Some people actually also phone up and say, "Wow, this is amazing. You can't describe this, and I can't because no. it is so simple and so utterly obvious. Yeah. It's so obvious, me can never get it because me can't take the obvious. But the, can't but see the, the, the obvious. The me is so sometimes so. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, because you are like well, you're so 30 or 40, yeah. the me is so, so in your brain as, yeah. as, as real. Yeah. And when it is so simple, why? why well, because the, um, the me, the, 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 the I likes complexity because it thinks complexity yeah. has a value. That's why if you look at most teachings, if you look at well, actually all the teachings I know, teachings, including religious teachings, are all incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. Tell me one that isn't. I don't know one that isn't. But they all seem complex because they are speaking to me. The brain. The brain. Mm -hmm. We can work it out. It would take quite a long time, but we can work it out. <laughs> okay. Hi Tony. Um, so this is really about death, isn't it? This is about death. Yeah. This is just the feeling I'm starting to get. <laughs> um, that it's actually not really 
um, what am I, f what I am after? Sorry? Like it's at the same time what I long for, but what I... Yeah, well, what you long for and fear most. Yeah, I just don't want it at all, in a way. Like I feel like there's like two possibilities, like either there's a sense of self with separation and longing, or there is um, this radical freedom and there's, there's just no one there to enjoy it anyway. Mm. Yeah, right? it's unknowable, yeah. So I feel like um, if whatever happens, happens, I'm just not even going to be there to so, experience it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're just experience. For the me, there's just experience of what's happening. Yeah. It's kind of a lose-lose sort of situation, it seems. <laughs> it's hopeless. But it is utterly hopeless. It's not a little bit hopeless, it's... <laughs> Tony, yesterday on Dutch television there was a program um, about enlightenment for oh. everybody. For anybody? Everybody. Oh, wow! <laughs> But probably you would uh, tell the opposite. That's what? Probably you would tell enlightenment for nobody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There is, um, yeah, and also it's awful because I also say there is no such thing as enlightenment. Yes. And also there are no people, so okay, that program was going in the wrong direction. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, well, there we are. <laughs> It, it was a, it were really passes, uh, different passes to enlightenment. Oh right. oh right. Via music, dance, bhakti, sex. <laughs> that, that always interested me more. Out of all the processes, you know, the sexual path to enlightenment was the one that I thought was most attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your way to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you can imagine the workshops, can't you? Anyway. <laughs> big, big warehouses full of <laughs> men on that side, but no. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to write a book. Yeah, when, before I, when I thought I'd like to become a millionaire, I thought it would be a good book to write, but. <laughs> Claire didn't think much of the idea, really. <laughs> oh. Thank you. What's testing one to yeah? What's the, what's the difference between um, you are everything you see and um, what what the guy there over there suggested? You are everything you see and everything is one. What's the difference between? Well, there is everything you see is for me dualism. You are you who is you are everything you. See, it's absolute dualism. There isn't any one, and there isn't anything to see. And the second one, I completely forgot more. <laughs> what was the second one? But if if you are everything you see, or everything you are aware of, 
that isn't, isn't there, it means that... You are separate from what you see. That's dualism. The me stays uh, fixed in, in selfhood by being aware. Awareness is the accomplice, is the, is the friend, is the generator, is the reinforcer, is the supporter of separation. I am separate, I know I am sitting on a seat. I know I am sitting on a seat. Pure dualism. Well, I, and the second thing you use, yeah. you, you, this can't be described, there aren't words that can describe this. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. Well, if you, if I would say it otherwise. You, right. you, you are the self of everything. Right, okay. Is, is yeah. it? Um, for you, if that's what you feel, that's what's happening there. That's fine. This, this isn't saying that. But, yeah. As far as this is concerned, that is about a personal experience. A personal experience is in the dream. So there is still, a, uh, if you say you are the self of everything, there is still a person involved yeah. over there. Okay. There isn't the self of everything. There isn't even everything. There isn't even nothing. Because all of that, that whole idea comes out of the dream. But there is something called everything, and there is something called nothing. That's why this can't be known. Hi, uh, Tony. Can I uh, ask you a question about uh, your motivation uh, to uh, be... Oh, no, oh, no. Oh. There is no one here. There's, no there's one. only everything. Okay. So there's nothing that has any okay. motivation. Let me re refresh my question. Yeah. Um, say uh, you are a seeker. And, uh, Sorry? Say I am a seeker, but there's nothing to seek for, nothing to be explained. Uh, I could might as well just look at Netflix instead of being here. Might as well watch Netflix instead of. Who's going to choose to watch Netflix, <laughs> and why would you anyway? Yeah, well, I, I don't I mean, know. You could find something make a, a bike, bit more interesting. Uh, make a bike ride. No, but there yeah. is no one who can choose to watch Netflix. Yes. Nobody's ever watched Netflix. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly surprising. Yes. <laughs> also, also true. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm what I'm struggling with is that. Uh, I do. I am a seeker. I would say I am a seeker. Uh, I'm a Zen Buddhist. Uh, I meditate every day twice. And for me, actually, it, it helps me a lot. It, it gives me a lot of um, joy actually yeah, doing this. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. It provides me a lot of. It would do. Yeah. It can do. It gives me inner peace in the way I, I see things. I, the way I deal with my emotions. Right. My relationships with other people get a lot better. Right. And yet still there is this... this yes, of course, because all you're doing is having better experiences. <laughs> that is true, yeah. And that's enjoyable, so there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Well, there isn't or, anything wrong with anything. No. What's being suggested here is that having better experiences is never entirely satisfying. Hmm. Because the better experiences don't last long. Because there's still you in them. You know, the me lives in what is happening. This yes. is a better experience. That was, oh, it's gone now. Oh, there's another better experience around here. Oh, that's gone now, and there's another better. And it's like going to Netflix and mm -hmm. watching a film, you know. If there's a really good film on, then that's a better experience. And then suddenly, <laughs> the screen goes blank. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the same thing as meditation mm -hmm. and all this. How, how would the world look like? No, 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 no such no, question. How to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. And uh, early Zen Buddhism, as far as I'm concerned, was speaking this language probably for about a month. 
And then after that, this got hold of it and turned it into a teaching. words indescribable and unknowable. No, no. Un unknowable. Oh, unknowable. Yeah, un unknowable. I'm thinking of these words, indescribable and unknowable for everything. Uh, maybe a good word would also be spooky. Spooky? Yeah. Oh, Instead of lovely. indescribable. Like that. yeah. Yeah. It's a nice word. I don't know whether, what it means. Quite. Spooky? Well, spooky. indescribable, indescribable yeah. and unknowable. Yeah. No? Shall we start a spooky group? Yeah. <laughs> the emptiness, fullness, and um, a spooky. <laughs> yeah. <this one>. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's largely the attraction of horror films or films about stories about ghosts. There's something that we're attracted to, or the me is attracted to, in the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same as unrequited love. There's a huge uh, hunger for stories or films about unrequited love, because somewhere we know we can't find the love we really long for. Mm -hmm. So you, can you say that? Yeah. So we are we are happening, right? We are happening, happening. Mm, uh, yeah, we apparently are right? happening. Yeah. So to that we are a bundle of energy, a bundle of energy in the form of of arm and legs, uh, moving around this universe. That's it. Or, <laughs> I, do, I don't feel, I never felt I was moving around the universe. <laughs> I mainly moved around Streatham. Where? Which Sorry? Is, <laughs> I want to just... That sounds very grand to be moving around the universe. And why on, would we On this we planet, anyway? the planet, the planet is moving, we are moving, the planet is moving, the sun is moving, the no, galaxy is moving, everything is moving. We are moving energy. And it was basic, believed right? at one time that the, cent the earth was the center of the universe. Yeah. And now it's believed that the self is the centre of being. The self. It's another uh, but misconception. That's not true, right? No. <laughs> no. 
Uh, that's what I'm just, okay, it is, it is indescribable, it is, it's unknowable, it can, it's not what you say, but in general, uh, yeah, what I said, we are energy in, in, in motion, in, in move, we are moving energy, and we are an instrument of the universe. We well, it's a, a, well, there's it's no an time. Appear, it's an appearance, yeah. An appearance. The, the me is an appearance. Yeah. yeah. But the me... If it's emptiness no, appearing as me. Yeah. But the, 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 there's only this body, there's no me inside. That's what I mean. And what's being suggested here is that the appearance of the me, which is energy appearing as the me, which feels that it is real and experiences itself as real, that's an illusion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's in the screen, yeah, what, it is just, there are no words to describe. It's the experience but within the, yeah. the me, that it is real, that there's the illusion or the dilemma that keeps me uh, uh, apparently happening. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, Mark over there. Hi. Um, yesterday you said there's no world. Um, there's no real world. No real world, yes. There's only the emptiness and... The, and do you mean then the dark energy? And, and, or do you also say there's a universe? Or do you say there's only apparently a universe? Yeah, so everything is only an appearance. Yeah, Whatever there is, is only an appearance out of nothing. It's nothing appearing as the universe or the world or... But then the, the physics have kind of proved only the emptiness is... Sorry? Then the physics, the quantum physics. Physics? Yes. Quantum physics. Yeah, what the, about quantum physics? Well, they, they have kind of proven that it's emptiness and dark energy. Well, you know, I don't know that they've proven it, but they're certainly pointing towards the same Yeah, thing. and they yeah. actually say that they can't know it either. No, and they're trying to measure nothing. Yeah. There's a mine in England and in America where there are scientists trying to catch and measure nothing. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so is it that then that we're all afraid of that emptiness? Is that... We're afraid of... Well, that the, the, the me, is, is the I, is afraid of that black emptiness. Unknowing, yeah. Unknowing. Yeah. Well, that's why it's afraid of dying, because it suspects that it, at the point of death there will only be unknowing. That's certainly so, but it's also so right now in what the me would call aliveness. All there is is unknowing. But the me is attracted to the idea of knowing the world it lives in. And, it, and that's, that's where its investment in, is in knowing. It thinks knowledge is powerful. Yes. That's why the quantum physics try to prove it, yeah. Yeah.
It's probably a, a stupid question, but... No, no. And what, what do you think about karma and reincarnation? Well, that's all part of the story. In the story, the me, the self, I want to create all sorts of, um, of uh, ideas about how it should live. So what we get, Christianity and Buddhism and all of those things, which are a way of comforting the me, the self, for losing paradise. Like, and, and in those religions, paradise is promised as something that can happen. But also, the other thing that, that me, that the self is frightened of, is unknowing. So, it, it, to overcome that sense of unknowing, it creates the idea of reincarnation, which establishes the idea that it will continue after death and go on knowing, rather than dying and then only being unknowing. So reincarnation is a way of, of, of comforting the seeker or the, the, the self. And, and karma is in a way another support of that idea because karma is based on time, uh, uh, the idea that time is real and whatever you think you have done or might have done in a past life somehow has some influence on where you are right now and your experience of what it is to be you. And this, this would also um, uh, influence what happens in the future. So karma is, but like reincarnation, is very much based on the illusion that there is something called time that is real. But this contracted feeling of self has disappeared in you. But how do you know that it won't come back? I don't know anything. There's nothing here that knows anything. All there is, is undoing. And you're okay with that? Sorry? You, you, are, you are okay No, there isn't anybody that. to be okay or not with it. All there is, is unknowing. Uh, what about the uh, relationships, as in mother? Uh, so, if you're relating to a person, for instance, no. your mother or uh, a male, female. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's a story. Okay, so that, <laughs> that arises in the story of me. So me is born, grows up, and believe it has to. Or it is related to other people, okay. whether they're mother or or the milkman. Um, there, there is a. Uh, 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 out of the sense of being separate and uh, in the dr hypnotic dream being in ex the experience of being a, a, a definite I am, I am real, then what comes out of that is that you are real and you're over there <laughs> and I'm here and I who am real here should relate to that which is real over there. <clears throat> it's all an illusion. <laughs> There aren't any mothers or fathers. Di difficulties to oh, see well, through it's the impossible illusion. for the me to comprehend that idea. Yeah, but it's and kind also, of like a circle. And all, yeah, absolutely. And also it's very, very uh, against the idea of me that there is no such thing as a mother or a father or a brother. Have you ever read the Gospel of St. Thomas? Jesus. That's the fifth one that was discovered more recently and was very mystical. And in it, he says, unless you hate your mother and father, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. There's, there's no... <clears throat> it could be presumed that you could choose to do that, but what it meant... Apparently, if you go back to the original meaning of the word hate, it means unless you're free of the idea of a mother and father. And it's tea time.